Click Dork back again. Today I'm continuing my series on click application automation and we're going to be specifically looking at variables or variables depending on how you might pronounce that word. Variables exist in the basic building blocks so I'm going to click on basic and you'll see that we've got the opportunity for some variables. Before I get started with those I wanted you to understand some of these variables are things like lists and objects and tables and to deal with that you want multiple things of data you want rows you want columns and so I'm going to get that data from this application over here you can see super highly important data uh, for the well-being of at least the click dork if not the entire world um, I've got IDs I've got categories for products and I've got my favorite products. I, there's a few other things I eat, but you know they're they're so the, the numbers were so small, they they didn't qualify statistically. And so what I've got here is an object. We haven't looked at this yet, but just bear with me. I think it's pretty easy to understand. It says get straight table data. I point it to the application. I point it to the sheet. I point it to the table that I want. And just so you know, these are easy to do. You just do a, a search and you choose what's out there. And it will narrow down the sheets based on the application you're in and the objects based on the sheet that you've chosen. Um, so it's going to go get this data. Let me get this out of the way so we can focus on our workflow here. Now you can see that he automatically will loop through that data. Now I could use a variable here. We're going to go ahead and drag that in and you'll see I have none created. Well I could create a string that might want to get me information about the straight table, about the application. That's not really what we're going to look at because I assume that you're already quite capable of understanding what a string variable and what a number variable would look like. We're going to focus instead inside of this loop on lists and tables. A list, as you can imagine, is a single column with multiple rows. So we're going to create a variable called sodas that is a list type. I'm going to create another variable called products and that is going to be a table type and so I add that I'm going to save those now I'm going to choose and I want to add to our list if I choose an add operation for this sodas list you'll see I can empty it uh, well most of my cans are empty already or my two liters are actually empty um, or I can add to it and that's really what I want to do here so we're gonna say I want to add an item to the sodas list well if I look at my um, get straight table data you'll see that it shows me I've got the entire list I, I've got all seven items um, what am I going to do with that and I'm gonna say hey I really want the name based on what item I'm in right now. And so I can say, get me the straight table data, the item contains the values, and I want the name of that, object, of that item. And I'm gonna create another variable instead. And this, one, this time I'm going to use the products. And what I wanna do here, I don't wanna empty my products, I wanna add to it and you feel free to send stuff to add to my products table as well. I want to add the rows to my products. And now if I look at this, I can expand this straight table. Now here's what I want you to understand. If I click here where it says get straight table data, that is going to add everything from here every single time through the list because I've just said get the straight table data and when we expanded this you'll notice it had all seven if instead when I bring this down 
I say, hey, I really just want the item from the straight table data. So I could click at the item level or I can click here. You'll notice it says get straight table data item. Now I'm only getting the row that, of the index that I'm on. So I'm adding it one row at a time so that I can deal with it that way. Well, now I, I've got that information. I save this. That's great. If I run this, I've got these variables set up that has sodas and that has products, but I really want to see them. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice I've really played a little favoritism with outputs because outputs is my way to debug what's going on. And I'm going to go ahead and drag an output down here outside of my loop. And you recall from my video, it always defaults to the last thing that's not inside of any type of looping you're doing. We do not want the whole get straight table data. Instead, what we want is our list of sodas. So we're just going to say, hey, I want that variable sodas, which is a list, and I would expect to get all of my sodas then. And so if I run this, I'm going to expect to see my list. Yay! This thing works just like a champ. I don't want to see my list of sodas. I'd rather see my entire product table. And notice as I look at this, I could pick a specific ID if I want. Or I can just say, give me all of my products. And so let's save that. And we run this guy. And I get my entire table of products. Well, let's come back and let's tweak that again. And I say, hey, I want my products. And what I showed you was I could choose a specific value. And ah, if I click on a specific value, I want the first product from the list. Or I could pick a number from it. I'm going to say I want that first line of products. And I get just line number one. Kind of cool, right? So as you're dealing with lists and tables, Understand that you can finagle this stuff in order to get certain lines. Now, this is my pretty picture view of the world, but you architects out there, you're thinking, ah, oh, come on now, how do I really code that? I don't want to have to hand pick this stuff. All you ever have to do is toggle this formula parsing and let you see the JSON for it. Oh my gosh, instead of dealing with that whole wizard that didn't make sense, I could just come in here and ask for product number two, which is actually the third ID in the list because it's zero based. And there you go. Now, let's come back to here because we also have objects and we haven't dealt with those. So I'm going to remove this output. You've seen that. What I want to do is I want to create an object. And an object class can have multiple things in it and so oh, we don't have an object that's there yet we're going to create that I'm going to say here's all my product data it says hey you're not allowed to have strings in it so I'm going to say product data with no um, space and I pick object I'm going to save that and now I'm going to pick this and what we've got available for products is I could empty my entire object. I could set something equal to it. So I say, hey, go eat, I'll go get this other object and copy things. What we're going to focus on is setting the keys and values. And so this can be rolled up. So I can say, mm, gosh, I want my list of sodas. And I'm going to assign it that sodas list. I want the entire list of sodas as one part of my object. And I'm going to set another thing here that's going to have product um, uh, details. And I want that entire table of products. And I'm going to bring that entire table of products back. And now I want to output this entire object. 
notice that since that's the last thing outside of any internal loops uh, that we're doing, it automatically defaults to showing me the product data. And you'll see once I've toggled it for JSON, it's saying, hey, I know who's working at this level now. You don't need this wizardy looking thing. You're probably going to hand type this stuff. I'll just keep going. Let me turn this back on so you can see the pretty little thing and you know, oh, that's a variable. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's got that pretty little variable icon. Uh, so I know what I'm dealing with. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to run it and we'll take a look at what we get here. Ooh, wow. I get a list of sodas. I get a list of product details. And you see here, I can scroll through to pick which row I'm on that way but man this doesn't really i don't see like the word id i don't see the word category man what's what's a different way to look at this output so that we can see the json behind it go ahead i'm going to wait for a second you could raise your hand raise your hand i see you screaming out there go to postman go to postman go to postman great call as long as I take this start block and I say triggered, it is going to give me a REST API call. So I can take this and all I've got to do here is come over to Postman. I can paste that in there exactly. It's got the token and all. And if I say send, you're going to see this data in the way that it's really returned and not based on the wizard view. So you hard code coders that want to make sure you understand the JSON that's really behind all of your variables, all your lists, all your strings, all your text, anything that you're outputting, you can actually see it wrapped up like this. And here now I can see my... Um, the object that I had that had my table and then I can see my list of sodas. Sometimes this is important for you to understand the reason I've done this. You are going to start working with some more hard code blocks that are going to output things. If I get that information and I can look at this and I see something like this, you know doggone well you're dealing with a list. If you see it more formatted like this, where you've got brackets and you've got multiple rows inside, you know you're probably dealing with a table of data. And then in which case, you could refer to it with the IDs like you saw before. Or you could actually um, refer to that and say, hey, go get me the product details, just the soda. Just um, or just the name or just the category or just the ID. So you'll see that. So hopefully that helps you kickstart your journey uh, with using variables because you're going to use them throughout most of your workflows. Have a great day, y'all.